This program is brought to you by the Stanford Humanities Center. For more information, please visit us at shc.stanford.edu. One question that, um, that is very important for archaeology is the production of the archive. So the whole idea of the living archive is that it, it provides the tools that allows one to reinterpret and strip off older interpretations and come to new ones. The Chattel Hute Research Project is a project devoted to the excavation of a site in central Turkey called Chattel Hute, which is a 9,000 year old, uh, a very early village. You can look down and see a, in, in a house and see a, a hearth that was last lit 9,000 years ago and it's still there looking exactly as it did then. The site is both a village and a necropolis, so it, it's a fantastic sort of source of information. And there's the symbolism that's, that Chatal is, Chatal Huyuk is famous for really and it's something that has captured people's imaginations. The beautiful painted reliefs on the wall, the hunting scenes, the geometric designs, the various types of figurines. We have a team of about 150 people who work at the site at Chatal Huyuk every summer. The range of data at a site like Chatal Huyuk is enormous. The data consists of tabular records, diary entries, textual material of various kinds, technical reports, a great number of images, still and video. I must say, it's, this site of Chattel Hoyuk really stands out because of its incredible complexity. You can look down 20 meters to see the bottom of the first buildings, and so they're all stacked on top of each other. It's an extreme complex spatial temporal construct. Getting your head around this as a researcher is very, very difficult. The idea for us, uh, for, for me, of having a, um, an interactive archive that could grow and change over the long term really means uh, creating something that you can add to and build and transform. And in that sense, I think the, the, the term a living archive is a, is a really exciting uh, image of what we're trying to achieve. The concept of a living archive is to publish scientific data of this sort in such a way that it can be examined in all of its detail for the present time and on into the future and reinterpreted in various ways. Archaeologists have for a long time have been collecting digital data uh, and uh, certainly at Chattel Huyu, we've been part of that uh, trend. We wanted to go a step farther than that. Visitors to the site, chattelhuyuk.stanford.edu, will find an overview of the elements of the site of the Chattel Huyuk Living Archive Project. The web mapping application has two distinct perspectives. One is building-wide search and browse, and another site-wide search and browse. We we'll begin with the building, and zoom into a particular building, in this case, Building 49. In addition, photographs are available. And if there's video associated with the building, that's available as well. So it's the 1st of September. Uh, this is Building 49. Um, and we are just at the end of, spe or at the construction level, if you like. What is really, really impressive to me is the rethinking of the data model as linked open data, which opens up this whole world of interconnections and queries uh, with other databases, uh, which, is, which is very important for Chattel Hoyek. Uh, it's a, a, an ex extremely important Neolithic site, uh, but it has a lot of trading networks with surrounding sites. Linking these together is really, I think, a huge step forward in terms of archaeological research. We're trying to ensure that Chattel Hayek data makes its way into this cloud and into the global knowledge commons such, in such a way that it hasn't previously. One of the great dangers of archaeology is that, you know, that, so that the pot people pick out their pots and take them away and study their pots, write a report, and that's it. You know, but I was much more interested in getting them to compare the pot data 
with the bone data and the seed data and the lithic data and the, all the other 35 types of data to, to try and cr create a more integrated discussion. In order to reconstitute a burial, for example, we might identify one of interest, click Show Burials to display the footprints of skeletons, click a zooming icon to bring us to closer view, display point data for the special finds, that is the grave goods found within this particular burial, and get some additional detail that is all of the detail available for this particular unit, which includes photographs of some grave goods, in this case spectacular ones and beads and obsidian blade. Recently at Chattelhuya we've been able to link our 3D models, uh, digital 3D models of, of the buildings with the GIS um, system that we have and that allows us uh, to really go paperless. So Chattelhuya in you know, is one of, the, one of the leading projects that is trying to do this. With the Chetelhuyuk Living Archive platform, you're able to see the distribution of artifacts and the frequency of those distributions as you're doing your queries. The immediate visualization helps make your querying more efficient and makes your research more efficient because you can adjust your query as you go, as you see different types of patterns visually. Having a set of um, mechanisms where, whereby one can find very easily all the, all the comparable entities over a very wide spatial and temporal time period is I think extremely exciting and it basically means in the end that the research community is not just confined to the team working at Chateau but is a global team that is all contributing to and reinterpreting the data. Together, the flexibility of Chattahoyuk's Living Archive along with the spatial component has been um, and will be very transformative for my research because my research looks at everyone's research.